Okay, so I have this animation right here. It's cool, but there's something about it that I really want to change. The up and down motion is very linear and it doesn't really have a lot of character to it. Now, if you have a little bit of experience in animation, you might say, well, you could take those movements and just change their interpolation so they're a little bit more interesting. If you don't know what that means, in most animation software, you can take these linear movements go into the graph editor, change their curve, and it gives them a little bit more character. My problem is these movements were created in geometry nodes with a texture using values. And unfortunately, you can't edit those values in the graph editor because that's just not how that would work. But in geometry nodes, I found a solution to this problem. And today I wanna to show you how to do that. So first, I'm gonna demonstrate how to fix that problem in geometry nodes to give your animations some character. Then we're gonna create two separate animations so you have more context of how to use this and when you can use this and have a little fun and we can walk away with a really cool animation. Now, if these motion graphics concepts are interesting to you and you really wanna know more about it, I just recently uploaded a collection of tutorials onto my Patreon all about these really interesting MoGraph concepts and geometry nodes. and It'll give you so much context as to how to make really interesting animations using geometry nodes. If you wanna check that out along with a ton of other motion design training for Blender, you can hit the link in the description and you can get 10% off if you subscribe annually. All right, now let's learn how to do this. All right, so for this portion of the tutorial, don't follow along, I'm just gonna demonstrate it. We will be making a follow along portion right after this. So here's the idea. I have a wave texture plugged into the position of all these cubes, so they're going up and down. But again, the motion, the movement is very linear, just going up and down. And I have no control of the character, the way this can move, because it's just this value, the phase offset is moving. I can't, you can't use that in the graph editor. So here's what's really cool. We can get an RGB curves node, or you can also use a math node set to power, but I like this a little bit better because it's visual. So what you can do is take this right now, we are kind of looking at a linear animation. So right now it's just linear, but what we can do is bring this down, bring this up, and we're noticing a little bit of a change. Now I can just move these and then add a map range just to control the height a little bit. We can have some fun. Now I'm gonna mute the RGB curves and you'll notice this is how they move, which does look nice. But again, if you don't have any control over a movement, then what's the point? So if we can add this RGB curves node, it's gonna change this a little bit and give it some excitement. Now you can kind of massage these curves to do, you know, have a little bit more smoothness, but we're noticing it goes quickly goes up smooth and smoothly goes back down. So you have a little bit more control. Now, this is fun because you can take these and sort of goof around with the curve and like add these weird things. You can notice how they kind of behave. You can add some chaos. Of course, this is your more standard S curve to get something interesting. So that's the solution. Create your movement. It's linear, add your RGB curves, and then you can add a little bit of more control right behind it once you have everything set up. So now, if you are a beginner in geometry nodes and you wanna know how to create this whole thing and have some more context, let's go ahead and build that. All right, so we are gonna start with a blank document and let's just throw a piece of geometry into here. And also let's get a cube because I want this cube to be beveled. I'm just gonna create it right outside of Blender, I mean of geometry nodes, get a bevel node and we'll just kind of bevel him to your heart's desire. And then you can also give it a material and pick your color. So let's go back to geometry nodes here. I'm gonna click on the plane that I'm gonna have my tree inside of. Let's hop into the geometry nodes workspace, click new, and now this has geometry nodes inside of it. So first, we're gonna go ahead and get a grid, and we'll plug this grid right into the geometry output. And then here in the scale, we'll give it a scale of 10. And then I'm gonna go ahead and look at this in a wireframe view. I think I'm gonna give myself eight on the vertices. Yeah, I think that looks really good. So first thing I wanna do, because I already know um, I'm gonna to wanna to cut holes into this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift D on this guy and right here on this plane in the outliner, I'm just gonna hide him. We're gonna look at this guy really quick and in the modifiers, if you hover over this guy right here, you can hit Control A and apply the geometry node. So now if I hit Tab, we have real geometry net we're working with. So what you can do is hit Tab, go here to Face and then hit I twice or to inset, 
And then let's just go ahead and create, I don't know, maybe right about there. I'm gonna hit X and click faces. So now we have this and then we can go ahead and get a solidify modifier and do that. All right, cool. So we have this, we can add our bevel later, but we'll keep it light for now. And then let's add our plane back that has the geometry nodes inside of it. And let's go ahead and get a mesh to, well, I'm in caps lock, mesh to points node. And then we'll do that. Now notice where the points are located. We don't wanna put our cube here. We wanna put our cubes here where we're deleted faces. So you can go from vertices to faces and now we'll be able to instance cubes here. So let's get a instance on points node and then right here in the outliner, just drag in your beveled cube, plug geometry into instance and then you can just go ahead and scale these guys down. We need to get a transform geometry node and let's just bring these guys down so that they're flat. There we go. Okay, so they're ready to be animated. So I'm gonna highlight these guys, I'm gonna hit G and move them. So let's do the first animation. We need to get a set position node right here and we want to animate the Z. And so in order to isolate that, we're gonna get a combined XYZ node and we'll plug vector into offset. So now we have the ability to plug right into here. So here's the first animation. We're gonna get a wave texture or really any texture you want, um, but we're gonna we're picking the wave texture today and we'll plug this right into the Z. And then if I play with the phase offset, you have, you have this animation. We can bring up the distortion and give it a little bit more variety, maybe even bring up your detail scale to really make it look pretty cool. And so what we can do now, say give ourselves 200 frames, and then in your preferences, very important in the animation tab, your default interpolation needs to be linear. Now this is the stuff that we talked about here, but in this case, this is why we can't use this in the graph editor because this is what we would be able to edit using the graph editor, and that would that just isn't the thing that's creating the movement. It's the wave texture itself. We're just telling it how fast to go. So we're, I'm gonna go bring my phase offset to zero. I'm gonna hit I, go to the very end, and I'm gonna type in two asterisk pi. So that's gonna be two times pi. And in Blender, pi is another way of creating a like a 360 movement. So this will make sure that this animation loops. Now it's really slow. Um, I don't know, give myself 120 on the frames possibly, and then just bring my keyframe over. Maybe even 80. So depending on your settings, that will be how you change your uh, animation. So now we can take this, I wanna edit this a little bit, so I'm gonna get a color ramp just to sort of isolate some of these cubes so they're not all moving at the same time. There we go, now we have that linear just up and down, in my opinion, is interesting, but could be cooler by adding our RGB curves. We'll do that and create our S curve. Now the angle, the, the straighter this slope, the quicker that little part's gonna be. So if I make this slope really, really um, big like this, it's gonna be like that. Notice the faster part, how fast it is. And then if I take this and make this middle slope really, really aggressive, see how the animation changes. So the way that you edit your graph, the way your S curve looks, of course, will dramatically change the way this looks. And then what I can do is just go ahead and get in a map range because I don't want to touch these later. I have the movement defined the way I like it. I don't want to touch any of this anymore. So I'm going to go after it and just say the maximum height. I just want to change my max height. There we go. Cool. So that's animation number one. And now I can take this plane right here. I'm going to hit tab, go here to the um, edge select. I'm going to hold down control and control and alt and I'm gonna select this outer part, so I'm gonna hit E for extrude and then S to scale. Cool, so I just wanna be able to have that out of the camera view and then 
Let's just make this look a little bit better with an outline and a cavity. So there we go. We have this doing its thing. So that's animation number one. Let me do animation number two, and then we can add some materials and some lighting. So again, animation number one, we used a wave texture to create the loop. Animation number two, so you can go ahead, save this project file, and let's create animation number two, which we're gonna be using proximity to have some of them kind of jump up at random, seemingly random places. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these. Let's hit Shift A and get an empty plane axis, and he is gonna be what we use to control the proximity. So in your outliner, you can just drag that empty straight into your scene. And let's build a little proximity setup. And I made a video about proximity uh, a couple weeks ago. It's probably maybe two or three videos before this one. So if you wanna learn more about this, I do have a video, as well as um, some dedicated tutorials on my Patreon as well about this topic. So let's go ahead and get in a mesh line. And his purpose is to just bring the count to zero. So we have one little point that Geometry Nodes is gonna recognize. And if we plug location and start location, we're essentially parenting that so that when the empty moves in the in the uh, viewport, it's moving this little guy around and they kind of, they have a marriage. Now we're gonna get a geometry proximity node and plug mesh to geometry and change faces to points. Let's just go ahead and plug distance right into the Z and we can see it's working. If I bring my empty around, you can see, cool, proximity is working. There's things we need to change though. So first off, let's go ahead and get a map range. Because what I want to do is wherever the empty is located, I want things to go up. Right now they're going down. So to invert a map range, you can see that two min, two max. Make max zero, um, zero and minimum one. And now we've inverted it. So when we bring our empty around, it's doing that. Let's go ahead and animate the empty first. I'm just going to go to the layout to make it easier. What I want to do is... Um, put an empty on a curve and then edit the curve to kind of like move around, um, almost like your mouse is moving it around. So let's get a curve circle, go to our empty, head to the constraints and add a follow path constraint and then just go ahead and select that path. And then what you can do is go into edit mode on this path and then if you click one of these points, you can hit G and uh, I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top. You can hit G and move it around. But first I'm gonna hit A, right click, and I'm gonna subdivide. And then I'm gonna hit G and start to just randomly move this guy around until you get, I don't know, an, an, interesting, an interesting path for your empty to take. So now when we go to our empty and we play with this offset, it's gonna bring this guy all around, which is awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself maybe 200 on the frames. And then we're gonna go back to frame zero to create this animation. So bring, click on your offset, give it a keyframe, go back and just type in 100, which will make it go around one full cycle and add a keyframe. So now he's gonna go around. Of course, we need to further alter and strengthen this effect. So we'll head back to geometry nodes. And first thing we'll do is go ahead and get in that RGB curves. And we'll create our S curve like we did originally. You can have some fun with it. Do something like this. And then we can get in another map range to edit the strength or the height of this effect. So then we can go and say, oh, Go up here, I'm gonna go to this map range and just tell it to bring a few more. So then this guy's a little too high. He is just gonna say, just bring a couple more cubes with you when you move. And then you can play with that a little bit and then adjust the height more there. So maybe I can bring a few more in. There we go. Sweet, so adjust the from min from max to adjust sort of the how many cubes are gonna be affected by this. And then this map range is gonna say how tall and you can sort of met, you can sort of do how you wanna do it with that. So this is how we're creating this. Now, 
let's go ahead and create a material for this and some lighting for this. Now, whatever animation you wanna use, if you wanna use the animation that we use the wave on or the proximity, you can add your, um, your materials from there. So let's go ahead and get a set material. So let's head into the uh, shading tab. We have these guys just kind of moving around. So let's give them a gradient texture so that when they're up in the sky, they're orange, and when they're on the ground, they're white. So what we need to do here in the outliner, click on the cube, and let's give it a color ramp. If you hover over this orange, you can hit Control C, and then if you hover over the, uh, the white portion, you can hit Control V, and I'm gonna make this black one white. So if you plug them there, let's go ahead and get a gradient texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, we're gonna hit Control T and give it a object coordinate. And we'll plug the gradient right into here. So it's gonna do this. It's gonna kind of treat them all the same. I want the um, object coordinate to sort of treat all of these like it's one big object, so this idea will work. So you have to click on this eyedropper and select the objects, and so now it's going to do that. So now what I need to do is rotate this texture on the Y by 90 degrees. And so now you can see it's kind of working that way. You, right here on the transition, they start to, the gradient is located right here, which I'm okay with that positioning. If you did wanna change it, you would do it on the X. You can bring that transition period, maybe, maybe like right before, right after, and then you can crunch in this color ramp to make that change a little bit more solid right here, or you can fade it out. So totally, totally up to your preference. And that's how that works. Now what I wanna do is have them change right when they leave their little spot. So right there, looks good for me. Sweet, let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and light this and finish it off. So first I'm gonna go ahead and pick my camera angle. So probably something like this, Control Alt Zero, snap it to view. In the camera settings, I'm gonna switch it over to an orthographic view and then bring my scale back. Cool. Let's go ahead and give it some lights. I like to use cycles. You can totally use EV if you want. So first let's go ahead and get an area light that he is gonna just be right above like a big establishing light, something like this. Maybe bring it down a little bit. I don't want this to be the brightest light in the scene. Then I'm gonna hit Shift D, scale this down and switch it over to a disc. Then I'm gonna hit G, and then move it around and then hit R twice to point it right in the center of our scene. And then you can bring your spread down to get kind of a highlight. And I think he's too angled. So I'm gonna bring him up and down to just be pointed right in the center. And then bring your spread up like this and then bring your power to like 300 and then adjust it from there. Sweet, so now we have this. I, I think the cubes don't go high enough. So in geometry nodes, on my last map range, we're just gonna bring them up. There we go. We've now created this. So there we go. You can go ahead and render this out. I recommend using a, I'm gonna go here to the printer icon. I recommend a PNG sequence, and then you can compile that later. 1920 by 1080, and in this case, because it's really smooth, soft materials, 200 samples should really do good for you. And then you hit render, render animation, and when you're done, you can have something really cool like mine. So there you go. Hopefully um, this was interesting and useful for you. Now you can have a little bit more control over the interpolation of these value-based movements. Um, it, it's a big game changer. I just created this animation with this trick and that's a tutorial I'll be posting in a few days. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.